what is up? So this morning, I got behind my computer desk standing here and I was going to do exactly what I always do every single Monday, which is go through every single currency pair in the Forex market and look for my favorite and what I consider to be the best trading opportunities and then send those trading opportunities to members of the Pro Trader Report. But I started thinking about you. That's right, the YouTube family here that we have on the trading channel. And I was asking myself, how can I provide you with value this great Monday morning? And decided that what I'm gonna do is record myself going through every single currency pair and pointing out my favorite, what I consider the best trading opportunities of the week, and then explaining why I think that's the case to help you improve and become a better trader on your own because that is the goal here at the trading channel. And instead of continuing to talk here on this intro, I wanna get straight into the content. So what I need you to do, click that subscribe button if you wanna become a better trader. It's down below the video to the right hand side. Click that like button, follow us on Instagram at the trading channel and smile. So it's going to be an awesome day. I'll see you after the intro. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started here with the Euro dollar. Before we do, I want to explain that this isn't only going to be a video where I go through and show you my favorite trades, the best trading opportunities I see for this week, but I'm also going to be explaining how I'm looking for these trading opportunities. So even if you're seeing this a year from now, it's going to have some great value for your trading and it will help you improve. So First off, we're gonna look at the Euro dollar. And right now, looking at the Euro dollar, what I'm gonna do is ask myself two questions, the same two questions I ask myself when looking for trades on any currency pair if I'm starting out here on the daily chart. And that is the beginning, starting out on the daily chart. Here we are on the daily chart. I wanna ask myself, what trend is this market in? And if I'm looking at this market right now, and I pull up a drawing tool, we can see that this market has currently put in what I consider to be a possible reversal. Now, this is not a complete reversal yet. We do have this one, two, three kind of trending move to the upside. The market is above the 50 EMA as well. So we have a lot going for a possible reversal here. But in order for me to actually classify this as a reversal and to start looking for long trades here on the Euro dollar, unless I have a specific strategy where I'm using this, I need to see one more break and close above this level for a possible uptrend and a possible long trading opportunity here on the euro dollar for that reason here on the euro dollar instead of looking for possible trend continuation plays i have to make a decision since i don't want to look for possible trend continuation on this pair yet i don't want to be looking for long trades yet i have to see another break and close right so what do i need to look for well for me the answer is quite simple if i'm not looking for trend continuation then i need to see where my next counter trend level is going to be to look for opportunities on this pair so for me that next counter trend opportunity is going to be somewhere up here at these highs so what i can tell myself what i can actually gather from the information i'm seeing on this daily chart right now is that the euro dollar is about to be in an uptrend possibly it could possibly start an uptrend when we do start this uptrend will i have room to the upside before my next counter trend level? The answer is yes. And if we start this uptrend on this pair and then we pull back down to this level of resistance or this level of resistance in this zone, that will be an area I look for possible long opportunities. Now, since this isn't immediate and I'm not really looking for anything right now, this isn't a trade I'm gonna be sending out in the Pro Trader Report. So we can go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and move on now actually to the USD yen. And on the dollar yen, I've already done the analysis on this pair. I'll do it again with you. So on this pair, I do see a possible reversal. And the reason I wanted to point this out, let me grab my drawing tool. Hold on just a second. Okay, so on the dollar yen, the reason I'm looking for possible short trades here is because we broke a major level of support. We have a level here that's been tested as support and resistance many times in the past. So in this specific case, we have a possible reversal because we have our one, two, three move possible reversal situation, and we have a level of structure that's been tested multiple times, the market just broke below. Because of that, this level, this area, is a level that I'm gonna be looking for possible reversals out of. I'll be looking for trading opportunities out of this area to the downside on lower time frames. And the next question I wanna ask myself is if I'm gonna be looking for short trades here, what's a likely area that the market makes it to after that trade? And what I see here, is this level pointed out with my black line. I'll make this a zone as well, something like that. So in this case, do I have room to the downside if I get a trading opportunity in my zone this week? 
Yes, I do. So the first part of the equation is ask yourself, what trend is the market in or are we in the middle of a possible reversal? In this case, in the middle of a reversal because we didn't only break one level of support, but a level that's been tested multiple times in the past. So that signals a possible reversal for me. Since we have a possible reversal, I want to wait for the market to pull back to the levels that were most previously broken. And when it does is when I want to do something like this to a one hour time frame and checking for possible short trades. And on every one of these time frames, I'm going to be in a downtrend. So I'm looking for possible short trades out of the dollar yen in the red zone because of all of that information for this week. I've already taken a picture of this and I have already sent it out to members of the pro trader report. So they've already gotten this information. And now what we're going to do is go ahead, jump back out of the daily chart and we are going to look for more opportunities on the Aussie dollar. Here, another opportunity that I've already pointed out. And can you tell me why you think this was a good area to look for trades? Why is this considered one of my best trading opportunities for the week? Go ahead and see if you can figure it out. The reason is because what trend are we in? Ask ourselves the same questions. Market came down, put in this double bottom. We broke through a resistance level here. We pulled back pretty heavily. And then we started this one, two, three, four, five, six move. If we have more than a one pullback being a two, the next leg being a three, once we break that, that's when I classify this as actually being in an uptrend. So what I was talking about that hasn't happened yet on the Euro dollar, where it has happened here on the Aussie dollar. So now I'm ready to start looking at that most previous level of resistance for a possible long trade. So for that reason, this week on the Aussie dollar, this is going to be an area that I'd look for possible long trades out of on lower time frames. The area between 0.6929 and 0.6907. And this happens to be a level that has also been tested multiple times in the past as support and resistance. If you can get all of those combining, if you can get a market that you can tell is in an uptrend based on the rules I've shared in this video, which is a, not just a one, two, three move, but then a break of that next resistance level. So we would need, and it all has to happen above a moving average of your choice. I use the 50 EMA. So we would need, let's say the moving average is right here. We would need one, two, three to go above the moving average and then another leg to push up and break resistance. Then I say this market is in an uptrend. That's what we do have here on the Aussie dollar. And for that reason, again, that's why we're looking for trades in this green zone throughout the week on the Aussie dollar. Let's move on now to the pound dollar. Ask ourselves the same question right now on the pound dollar, what trend are we in? Well, we have a push up, a pullback. That's our one, two, three. We then have another pullback and break of a new high. Because of that, we are in an uptrend here on the pound dollar according to my rules. Since we're in an uptrend, an area that I would be looking for possible trading opportunities in is this previous level of resistance right in this area. You can see that the market already came down to that area. This is an area I believe we pointed out in last week's Pro Trader Report. If that is the case, I'll put a picture of that on the screen somewhere. But the next thing I'm waiting for is really nothing until we break this high or start a reversal. Because right now we're just kind of in no man's land. I would consider this consolidation until we continue to move up. And considering that my bias is long on this pair, if I can tell you something that's a little more complicated and hopefully not confuse you, I hope this doesn't confuse any beginners. But right now I do have a long bias on the pound dollar. Reason being because we're in an uptrend here on the daily chart. Because of that, something I would do is go down to a four hour chart or a one hour chart and wait for this market to start trending on this currency. I mean, on this time frame. excuse me. Once we break this high on the four hour chart, we're back in an uptrend on this, on this pair. We're back in an uptrend on the four hour and I can start looking for possible long trades here. So that's just an example of taking the daily time frame bias and using it down on lower time frames, which is something I may do in the future here on the pound dollar. So let's go ahead and go back out to the daily chart. We have nothing here that I would send out in the pro trader report. So, We'll continue looking here on the dollar Swiss. We have an area that I've already pointed out in the pro trader report. We did get kind of a bounce. This was last week's report as well. We got kind of a bounce out of that level, but now that we have the bounce out of that level, what I would look at is either a new level below this for counter trend or a trend continuation level. What do you think would be a good trend continuation level for this currency pair? What I'm seeing is an area right in here. We could move this wick down to the bottom of that wick and this to about right there. This would be an area I would look at for possible shorting opportunities if the market does something like this. Reason being is because it's the next or last most previous level of structure support that was broken. And it's also a level that's been tested multiple times in the past. 
with those two factors in place, this area between 0.977 and 0.980 will be an area I look for possible shorting opportunities throughout this week. Let me color this red and actually go ahead and create my zone. And you may have the question of, since you have this green zone here, Stephen, would you look for another long trade out of it? After the initial bounce, I don't. If we get an initial bounce like this, that's all I expect out of counter trend zones. I'm not really looking for complete reversals. I'm looking for bounces where I can capture a small amount of movement on a lower time frame. It ends up being a large amount of movement, and you can actually capture some pips down on like an hourly time frame in this case. So right now we're looking at this chart. I'm going to snag a picture of this, and we will move on. Again, what else would I be looking for? Another counter trend level. So I'll go ahead and point that out as well. I just zoom out my daily chart and ask myself, where's the next lowest support level that's been tested multiple times? This is our zone. So our next counter trend zone here on, and the reason for that, again, I'll go ahead and explain this. The reason this is our zone is because we have support here, which is the lowest level that's been tested recently. We have support in that zone here, resistance in that zone here, and another little bounce of support here. So our next counter trend zone would be between 0.9583 and 0.954, which isn't something I expect this market to hit this week. And if we were doing everything correctly, like I had mentioned at the beginning of the video, I could tell this was in a downtrend, so I didn't mention that, but I would have looked at trend first and asked myself, are we in a downtrend on the dollar Swiss? And we were. So my counter trend plays are going to be long trades. And for my trend continuation, I'm looking for previous levels of support that I can that I believe will become resistance. That's the dollar Swiss. Let's go ahead and move on. Canada Swiss, what trend are we in? Predominantly down, but no real trend here as we're just consolidating along and there's no real trading opportunity here as we're just consolidating. What I would need to see in order to look for possible trading opportunities is a push down to my next counter trend zone, which I have here, which I don't think will happen this week. So I'm not gonna send this out or a push up to what I consider to be my next major level of resistance right here. That could possibly happen this week, but I'm really not seeing that much movement this week out of this currency pair, so I'm not going to send anything out for the Canada Swiss. Canada Yen, we have a counter trend area already pointed out, and we are predominantly in a uptrend, but at the same time, we're not in a very strong uptrend. As you can see, the market barely broke above this resistance level. Let me change that to black so you can actually see it. The market barely broke above that resistance level before immediately pushing back down. So I'm really not, I don't have a long bias here on the dollar Swiss because of that. I don't have a bias at all. And the best thing you can do if you're confused about a situation, if you don't have a bias, if you can't tell if a market's trending or in consolidation, it's just not trade that pair. It's time to sit on your hands and just be patient and maybe look at a different currency pair. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to place anything here on the Canada Yen. I will grab a picture of our counter trend zone because that could happen this week. And if we get a push up to our counter trend zone this week, of course, it is gonna be an area I look for short trades considering our trend is up and a counter trend trade would be a short trade. So in that area is where I'll be looking for possible shorting opportunities based on a couple of different entry reasons we have in that zone. Let's go ahead and move on now to the Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie came down and just played around with our possible counter trend entry, but it didn't really touch the, the zone. So we wouldn't have had a trade out of that area. And we've now pushed up. I'm not seeing anything here that I would be looking at for a trading opportunity. I can do this pretty quickly. If I wasn't explaining this, this takes me about 10 minutes in, in the mornings, but I wanted to explain it to you and actually try to show you how to do it yourself. So right now you would look at this and go, what trend is the Euro Aussie in? There's not really one. We're just consolidating. There's no trend here. So if there's no trend, what's my next level of possible counter trend, I guess you could call it trades. This is a level of resistance I would possibly look at for uh, short trades, but I would have to get a really good entry reason on a lower time frame to want to trade in this area. So because of that, I'm not going to send anything out here. I'm not really looking for anything on the Euro Aussie throughout this week. Euro Canada. The Euro Canada is coming down to a counter trend zone, but I'm actually going to move this zone down now that I see this lower low here to about this level. Uh, right in here and this market's already came down kind of kissed that area if we get lower into this zone again it will be an area i look for possible counter trend long trades because of these two support levels right here looking left in this area so if we get down again like i said this week to this area it is an area i'll look for possible shorting opportunities we do have a possible level of resistance as well back here for a trend continuation play. 
the market's already kissed this level too. But if we get back up to this red zone, I'm about to draw in right here, then this will be an area I look for possible short trades. This area hits between 1.4561 and 1.4535. In that area, I'll look for possible shorting opportunities for trend continuation here out of the Euro Canada. So let's go ahead and move on now to the Euro Pound after I snag a pick of this one. And the Euro Pound now. On the Euro Pound, I don't see anything. I'm going to move through it quite quickly now. If we're looking at trend, yes, we're in a downtrend. But at this point, we've already broken above the most previous level of support. So right now, I would be looking for this market to either possibly reverse. And this is a really good note. Whenever you don't see anything on the chart right now as in terms of what you want to trade, it's a good idea to actually step back and look at the chart and ask yourself what needs to happen so I can look for a trade. In this case, I would need this market to either reverse so I could look for possible reversal trades back here or continue lower and break through these lower lows. And if that happened, of course, I would be looking for possible counter trend trades there. So I already know what I'm gonna do. Pretend it's a chess game. Pretend the market is a chess game and you need to be four or five steps ahead of the market at all times. I am completely by habit at this point, four or five steps ahead of the market. I know exactly what I'm going to do here on the Euro pound. No matter what this market decides to do, no matter what this pair does, I already have plans. I already know what I'm going to do if this market goes lower, if this market goes higher. And that's a relieving feeling and also something that you must do if you want to actually be prepared for any situation out of the market. So let's move on now to the Euro yen. On the euro yen, I don't see anything. We just double top. We broke through. We're kind of just consolidating here until we either we have our double top. We would need another break of support to put us in trend. Then I would be looking for possible short trades out of this pair. Or we need this market to break into new highs and possibly get some trades out of this zone. Because we got so close to this top zone already and then started falling, I'm not going to be looking for short trades in this zone again. So we're going to move on to the euro New Zealand. On the Euro New Zealand, we have a possible shorting opportunity zone the market's in right now and a counter trend zone we haven't touched yet that I'm also looking at. Now, what are the reasons behind this trend continuation zones? I always look for trend continuation first. I am in a sense a trend trader, but I do look for counter trend trades if there is no possibility of trend continuation. So, and when I, I know there's always a possibility for trend continuation, I mean no possibility for a trend continuation trade in a particular zone like my rules describe. So in this case, the reason that we're looking in this zone for shorting trades this week is because this market is predominantly in a downtrend. We have all of these little moves down, huge moves down, small pullbacks, and then we get a pullback up to what is this right here? It is the most previously broken level of structure support. Now I ask myself, we're at the most previously tested level of structure support that was broken. But do I want to trade in this zone right now? The answer is yes for me. I can trade if that's all I have. But what I like to use as an extra confirmation is was this level ever tested and perform and either pushed up from or down from, became support or resistance from in the past? And the answer is yes. We have another area of support right there where the market used this level we have some resistance looking left back through here so because of that that gives me added confirmation that this is a level i want to pay attention to for possible shorting trades let's go ahead and snag a pick grab it and go all right your new zealand is done let's move on to the aussie yen on the aussie yen predominantly in an uptrend but we've now broken below our previous level of structure resistance that was broken most previously which is where i would be looking for long trades because of that i'm not looking for anything on this pair unless we break into a reversal or break higher and i can look right here for possible long trades now we'll move on to aussie canada and because this video is already over 20 minutes long hopefully it was extremely valuable for you in terms of learning what I'm looking for in these zones. Also, in these zones, you're not just looking for the zones and going, I'm going to place a trade when the market gets there. You want to drop down to lower time frames and, and look for some type of entry, but you also, this has to be a tested plan. You can't just randomly start trading this and expect it to be profitable because as traders, we're looking to have a statistic edge, a probability of winning, and unless you test and validate that whatever entry you're going to use in these zones is a winning pattern, a winning entry in these zones, then you have no way of knowing if you have a statistic advantage. But this is one step to building that statistic advantage 
in what we call a trading strategy. So you have this and what you, what you can do is go ahead and test these zones with double tops and double bottoms. I'm telling you, you'll, you'll be surprised at the results. So go ahead and go through the market and back test that for a while. Decide if it's something you want to put in your trading plan. And if it is, go nuts. Go ahead and start creating a strategy based on these rules. These zones can be extremely accurate. And the way we look for them, yet again, just to give a final recap, is we look at a market, we go, what is the trend of this market? If the market's in an up or a down trend, then we look for trend continuation trades based on the previous level of structure that was broken. So in this case, we'll look right here. This market was pushing down, created a support level here, pushed up as a pullback, pushed back down, broke below that level, and immediately we said, okay, because of this situation, we are in a downtrend under a moving average. I used the 50 EMA, and this market, I want this market to pull back to that zone before I start looking for trading opportunities. When we're in that zone, I want to look for short trades on lower time frames. Boom. And then you can see, and it's not 100%, nothing is, but that would be the trend continuation version. And when we're not in trend continuation, you want to look left, let's say price is right here on this little red bar right here. I would take a horizontal line, place it at the close of that bar, scroll back and ask myself, where's the level, the last level of support that had been tested multiple times? And that level is exactly where the line is. We have this wick test, we have this test here, and if I scroll back further, probably a little further, we have another test right here. So with that being the case, this would 100% be an area I would look for counter trend trades. And we got a nice little counter trend bounce from that area. So that's something to keep in mind. That's a recap of everything we went over today. And if you would like to start receiving emails of these zones every single Monday, showing you my top trading opportunities, the top trading zones that I'm looking at, then there's a link in the top of the description labeled Pro Trader Report. If not, that is totally fine. Just make sure you're subscribed here for more valuable content. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button, follow us on Instagram, and check out one of the videos that's gonna pop up to one side of my face. I really think you'll enjoy it, and it will help you to improve in your trading career. So with that being said, I wanna wish you the best of luck on all your future trades. I wanna wish you a great 2020. Happy late new year, and I will talk to you in the next video. See you soon.